Hey people, how you doing? Hope you're doing amazing. Now, um, so in this video, we are going to basically talk about the astrology of the dartboard and the alchemy of the dartboard. This is so interesting because we've already established this is a Stone Age game. And uh, now we're going to establish that it goes um, into alchemy and astrology as well, but even uh, a, a sort of Bronze Age astrology and, and uh, a Bronze Age alchemy. This is just amazing. It contains Aristotelian concepts. Uh, it contains so much. It's fascinating. Now, so let's get started. Uh, another in the dartboard series, but uh, you will love this. So this is the dartboard. And someone, a, a, a patron sent me a message and he said, Hang on, that's a planetary system. That's the Copernican system or, or the other system, right? And it is. Now, what's significant here is that you're aiming for the bullseye, which is 50, and you're aiming for the triple 20, which is 60. So you, you want to, and you want to eliminate numbers as fast as possible. You start from 301 or, or 501, and you have to get down to zero. And to finish on the zero, you have to hit the outer ring. So the outer ring, the outer planet, is for finishing up, for like eliminating this solar system, and but you start by hitting the sun or the earth and then the other planet there. So what's happening is you're starting with, uh, say, the bullseye might be earth with a score of 50, and if the sun is up there, you're hitting the triple, so you're hitting the sun. Alternately, if the sun is considered to be in the middle, they probably knew the sun was in the middle. These were, these were not silly people in the Stone Age. Um, you're aiming for the sun, which is the 50, and then... What are you aiming for at the triple 20? Jupiter, the king of the planets, or Zeus. So that's the highest score. And then to finish up, you're aiming for Saturn, or you're aiming for the, the, the stellar, the, the, the fixed stars. So Saturn means time. So you're finishing on time. And as here's the thing, right? It, it's a phenomenon that as you play darts, first the game goes fast. You're getting high scores, but then it slows down as you keep, because you have to finish on an exact score, an exact double on the on the Saturn ring. So it, it gets slower and slower. And as you go out, out towards the planets, they move slower and slower around the sun. So um, Ptolemy's order of the planets was by, this is by speed of the planets. All these planets are moving faster than the other. And that was one of the, the things that kept people thinking it was an Earth centered solar system in my opinion uh, if, if the speed just goes faster and faster as you get towards the moon so so they thought oh well it, that, that's how it works it, it, the outside of the spiral is slowest the inside is fastest so I think that's what's hap happening possibly um, as the game goes on it gets slower so this was seen as, as a mystical game a parallel of the solar system so you must finish on the slowest planet Saturn right so there's more stuff here. Now we've we've already shown that this comes from a, a triple uh, from a, tr a tw base twenty uh, system because there's twenty segments in the dartboard. So um, some of the rules are very interesting. So players, uh, if none of the play so players continue playing until one of them scores zero points in total. So you have to get down from three hundred one to zero, and you keep marking off what your score is. If none of the players get to zero in twenty turns, so the twenty is sacred. The player with the lowest point wins. If, so, so it has to be 20 rounds. So we're using sacred uh, numbers of a base 20 system. This is the probably, I think, the system of the Beaker people. Now, if the scores are equal after 20 turns, the game will continue for another possible 10 turns. So that's the sacred 30. So the Dogon, as well as the Stonehenge people, it seems, um, they celebrated a festival every 30 years and another festival every 60 years. So the 30 and the 60 are what we see at Stonehenge. Um, 30 sarsen stones were in the outer circle. Now it's down to 24, but in the 1827, a guy counted 30. Just fascinating. If the scores are equal, um, a player with a lower score after any time after the 20th turn also wins the match. If the scores are equal after 20 plus 10 turns, the match will end in a draw. So the, the 20 and the 30 are sacred. So we also see... Um, the X and Y holes are a 30 in number uh, It's at Stonehenge. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Now, let's go on. Now, I've said before this was an astronomical clock in the previous video. There's 12 constellations in the zodiac. So, the um, thing is, the dartboard is 20. 20 constellations. It's a clock with 20 constellations. And I've said this is the oldest dartboard, 3500 BC. Now, you have the triple ring, you have the double ring, you have the numbers, and you have the 20 segments. And you're saying, Charlie, there aren't 20 constellations. Well, guess what I found? 
I found that before it, the Iron Age Babylonian system of the 12 constellations, there was a Bronze Age system of constellations with, according to this, 17 or 18 stations. So there were 17 or 18 constellations. I honestly think that, that there might be a few gaps there, and it's actually 20 if you count uh, the gaps. So, they, they, because they wanted to make it base 20, because who's ever heard of base 17 or base 18 as a number system? So, they wrapped that around to the 20. So, there were actually a lot more constellations in the past. Um, and that's just fascinating. So, we could be looking at an earlier clock with more constellations. Now, I've been reading on this website, Darts 501, that all the old dartboards used to look something like the Yorkshire dartboard, or like these dartboards. And the triple ring was only invented in the 1920s. And I thought, well, could that, would that invalidate all my, uh, all my research that I've done into the showing how the Dogon and showing how this, um, this, uh, this special zigzag in the historic Tunbridge dartboard is actually um, uh, making a, a triple on one side and a, and a single on the other side as according to the Dogon code. Would it invalidate that? Not at all, because um, what you see happening is, um, firstly, you see that, but th that's not proof. But the proof is, it, say, um, so this guy here, Patrick Chaplin, I really hope he doesn't mind me looking at his website. Sure he doesn't. He did a PhD on darts. He calls himself Dr. Darts, and he says he's been researching darts. I'll have to send him this because he's very interested, but uh, so I hope he doesn't mind uh, showing his website. But um, he... Um, He's been researching darts since, I think, 85, he writes, and he's still going. And he says it wasn't until 2013 someone sent him this. A photo from 1906, he thinks that's the triple possibly and that's the double, or vice versa, he could play another game with that, the triple and that double. And so what's happening here is um, inside there, inside on the inside of this zigzag, as we showed in the darts video, is, uh, is a double or a triple, and on the other side is a single. Now that is the Dogon code for reckoning 20 year intervals, so that would explain the triple 20s on the dartboard. In addition, uh, this is also from Patrick Chaplin's website, Tunbridge Dartboard, and he's quoting from a book on darts written in 1936. He says it's imaginatively titled darts, <laughs> and um, he says passing, so he's quoting, and I hope he doesn't mind, passing through Kent one evening and itching as we, we followers of the game do itch for darts, you are once again pass, faced with the unfamiliar. This plan of doubles and trebles is known as the Tonbridge game. How Tonbridge came to foster a special rule of darts is a mystery, but then the whole history of the game is clouded with enigma. On these boards, the outer scores treble, so the, the double ring is the triple, so you finish on the triple, so you finish on the most sacred. The little triangle behind it is the double. And this gives rise to some almost fantastic possibilities. So recall in the darts video, uh, we showed that on one side of one side of the zig, the right hand side of the zigzag is the triple. The inner side of the zigzag is the single. In this case, it's it's the double, and there's the triple there in the ring. So, um, so the, the triple ring was not invented in 1920. It was it was put in to the London dartboard in 1920, a pre-existing rule, I think, from the Stone Ages. Fascinating. And this guy, on uh, my patron, he sent me this. Uh, and, and he said, this is some little dartboard as well. What's going on here, Chucky? And so let's look at it. So this is a guy called Empedocles, about a contemporary of Aristotle, or slightly before, came up with this. And he said, there's four elements in the universe. So there's the terror. So terror is grossa. Obtusa, obtuse, that's large, uh, or ungainly, and immobile, the earth doesn't move. The water is mobile, acute means sharp, and uh, fat, grasses. The fire, acutus, tenuous is thin, and mobile. The aqua is gross, fat, mobile, it moves, and obtuse. And he's got this phrase around here, which I can't quite read. Rationum creatura solidata air secundum geometricum. Now, this is medieval Latin, which is different to classical Latin that Google gives you. Medieval Latin, you need a separate dish dictionary to read it. Uh, so it simply says, according to the creature, is solid with a geometric. So we assume a geometric form. Geometric cam. So... Um, so, so, so according to this, we uh, or, or creation is solid with a geometric form, and his geometric form, as you see, it's a it's a quadruple Olympic rings.
So let's go on. Now, what he was actually do what he was doing is a variation on what Aristotle was doing. But he was saying there is um, in his four systems, it, four um, harmony of four things. So you have the earth, which is um, you have the earth, which is love and strife together, uh, a harmony of them. And then uh, then you have um, aqua and water refers to um, uh, uh, water is a pure domain of love and harmony, uh, but no life, and a pure domain uh, and, and fire is, is strife and, and uh, 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 the, the air, sorry, the air is strife and, and chaos, but there's no life and the, there's love in the, there's life in the fire. And so he's saying the whole universe is a balance of strife, and love. And that got me thinking, well, what he's actually talking about is everything is driven by the wave mechanics of human emotion. So this is a stock market chart of a company, right? Well, it's not just that. It's a, it's, it's a human wave mechanic of emotion of the whole planet. So everyone on the planet's optimistic here, everyone's pessimistic there. And this is driving the economy. Now, um, what Empedocles did is a variation of Aristotle's um, map of the world with the elements. So the earth's down the bottom, there's the water, there's the fire, and there's the air. But that guy put the air there and the fire there. Aristotle put the air on top because the air goes up because it's light. He says the earth goes down because it's heavy. The fire, you see it in heaven, so it's up there. And the water is uh, raining from the sky, so it's up above the earth. And this is his harmony. And you see some of this in the clocks. So I've said that's the sun in the clock. Someone's emphasized the Jewish star. But you see that's actually, uh, this could be a Masonic clock. It's a combination, actually, of the earth and the air or the water and the fire all in one. And it's, that's what that is. But it's, as you saw, it's also a dartboard and it's also, it's, it, it, it's also the sun. It's a sundial, as we saw in the previous video. Now, um, this is four, but it's also... Trigonal. It's trigons. Now, you're going to say, how is this a trigon, Charlie, if there's four? And this confused the hell out of me when I started researching this. But remember I said what we can do, say, with the, 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 the Tunbridge dartboard is um, we can, uh, or, or this dartboard, is we can plot trigons around the universe. So, um, so what happens is Jupiter and Saturn come together here. Then you follow this line down. They come together here. Then you follow that line across, they come together there. And so they come together there. Then 20 years later, they come together there. 20 years later, they come together there. And at the 60th year, the Dogon will have a celebration because it'll come together there. And I think the Stonehenge people as well, they celebrated the 30, the 60. All the numbers that you see in the dartboard are celebrated at Stonehenge. It's fascinating. So this is a, a, a very fascinating system of trigons and the trigons occur when the trigons occur in different uh, fire in water in air in land you get different properties and disasters happening on the planet so what happened here was you had the exit of the trigon exiting at the end of the the 1600s and people thought there was going to be a disaster exiting the water trigon and they thought a disaster was coming so um uh, and, and just to recap, recapitulate, what happens is it takes 800 years for that to go back to exactly the same point, and it's shifting. Each time it comes back, it shifts a little bit. It comes back to approximately the same place, takes 40 times around, finishes up in 800 years. Um, so let's get into it. So the, fi the, the fiery trigon, when it happened in the... In the, uh, the fiery trigon was characterized by uh, um, hot and dry. So hot, there would be hot and dry conditions if Jupiter and Saturn came together in that part of the sky. Um, if it came together in this part of the sky, it would be cold and dry. If it came together in the airy part of the sky, it would be hot and wet. If it came together in the, the watery part of the sky, it would be cold and wet. So this is how, for since the Stone Age, they predicted in advance, decades, centuries in advance, and they looked at the, the previous 800-year history and they saw when certain kings ar arose and they said, okay, this king is an astral projection of, 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 of descended from heaven, God ordained. So this king is, is a kind of prophet. So we will have a king similar to this king in another 800 years time. And this is how they predicted uh, the prophet Jesus at a particular time. They thought, oh, there's a prophet coming and 
We don't know who it's going to be, but there's the star of Bethlehem, which is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. This is, this is the only way you would do it. This is how it was done. This is how the Babylonian astrologers did it. So let's read a, read a bit. So uh, originally a trigon. So, so the trigons, they occur every 20 years, as you see. So um, every, tr every 20 years, it's called a great conjunction. When the planets line up, it's a grand conjunction. When Jupiter and Saturn come together, it's a great conjunction. So every 20 years, so 1842, 1861, 1881, 1901, 1921, and if, if, they, if, if it lasts a long time, they, they write the date twice, but it's really the same conjunction. Then, um, uh, so there was a big one around 1940, so that, that's why there was bad weather in Russia. Um, uh, around 1941, it was the worst winter of the 20, 20th century, um, as, uh, as they found out um, at Stalingrad. Uh, 61, 81, etc. It goes on. Now, let's just read this so you get a picture of what's going on. Originally, a, a trigon was thought to... to oh, and they do... They, 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 as, as, as it's shown, they, they're 120 degrees apart in a triangular pattern, right? Triangle, very, very sacred, right? So, originally, a trigon was thought to last 240 years and the full cycle 960 years. Now, just as an aside, this is why they thought there's going to be a thousand year Reich, uh, or, or empires last a thousand years. Now, if you look at Rome, Edward Gibbon said it was 400 years rising and, four, uh, and 400 years eclipsing, setting, being destroyed. And that's true, the Western Empire at least. And um, the Eastern Empire, after the 400 years of the, after the death of the, 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 Rome, uh, the Roman Empire in the, in the West in, in 450 AD, the empire in the east lasted a further 1,000 years after that. So there was another 1,000-year cycle that it latched onto. So a trigon was thought to last 240 years or a full 960 years. But later, more correct estimations were provided by the Alphonsine tablets. So that's um, that they were in Spain, done in Toledo, which was the astronomical center of medieval Europe. And they said it was 800 years. Now, despite the inaccuracies and some disagreement about the beginning of the cycle, the belief in the significance of such events generated a stream of publications which grew steadily up to the end of the 16th century. As the Great Conjunction of 1583 was the last in the watery trigon, it was widely supposed to herald apocalyptic changes. A papal bull against divinations was issued in 1586, and as nothing really significant had happened by 1603, the advent of the new Trigon, the public interest rapidly died. So that's the Trigon that's showing that. Uh, now let's read a bit more so you understand this uh, amazing system. So this is from a book called John Dee's Conversations with Angels. Uh, Kabbalah, Alchemy, and the End of Nature. I'd love to have this, but academic books are so expensive. But anyway, astrologers of the period warned that another cataclysmic event, this is in addition to a comet, loomed on the horizon. Now, this is knowledge from the Stone Ages that the darts people, the clock people, would have been aware of. Further threatening the stability of the Book of Nature, a conjunction of the superior planets Saturn and Jupiter. This was an astrological event of such rarity and importance that it was discussed in print for years before it actually took place in 1583. D was well versed in this literature, and by 1552 he owned Albemas's important work on the significance of grand conjunctions. The predicted 1583 event was more than a conjunction; it involved a shift from the watery trigon to the fiery trigon. This shift is complicated, well, for him, but I've just explained it to you. But critical to our understanding of the importance D accorded to his angelic conversations, as well as to the growing sense of decay and deterioration that people thought was affecting the Book of Nature. There were four celestial trigons, each, well, it's, uh, I don't know if you can call them trigons, each related to the elements and signs of the zodiac. For example, the watery trigon was comprised of three signs linked to water, Pisces, Canca, Scorpio, and the fiery trigon was linked to Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. The trigons influenced the water in a repetitive cycle from fiery to earthy to airy to watery. As each new trigon became influential, it caused significant changes in the terrestrial sphere. These changes were magnified when a conjunction of the superior planets closest to God, Saturn and Jupiter, occurred as they entered the sign of the zodiac that signaled a new trigon. Thus, a great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter occurred every 20 years when Jupiter and Saturn entered one of the three signs of a specific trigon. Greater conjunctions were much rarer and more significant events occurring once every 240 years, 
When Jupiter and Saturn entered into a completely new trigon, the rarest conjunction of all was the greatest conjunction. This occurred once in roughly a thousand years when Jupiter and Saturn re-entered the fiery trigon, an initial trigon of the cycle, in the sign of Aries. Historians and astrologers agreed that there had been six greatest conjunctions since the creation, one during the life of the prophet Enoch, another with Noah's flood, a third when Moses had received the Ten Commandments, and a fourth during the dispersal of the Ten Tribes from Israel, a fifth at the birth of Christ, and the sixth coinciding with the reign of Charlemagne. So what they're saying is the earth is 6,000 years old. These are all the great empires and apocalyptic changes. And uh, I've sort of proven how this can work in, in earlier Electric Universe videos earlier this year, year if you want to check that out. Now, uh, now, few doubted that the greatest conjunction uh, due to occur in 1583 would be the harboring of a, singular, uh, of a similarly monumental event especially since discussions of the conjunction were already reprinted. Well, how about the end of the Middle Ages? That's, that's, that's about 100 years after the end of the Middle Ages, and we entered a new modern world in 1583, so why not? They were, they were right. But anyway, let's continue. We're, um, discussions of the conjunction were often reprinted with new editions of Regio Mantatus, Mantanus' 15th century astrological predictions that the world would end in 1588. Astronomer Tycho Bray suggested that the potential effects of the entry of Jupiter and Saturn into the fiery trigon would be magnified by the new star he observed in Cassiopeia in 1572. Bray decided that these celestial signs, when combined, foretold unprecedented changes in the Book of Nature. A Bohemian astrologer, Kiprian Leovitz, concurred and discussed the significance of the conjunction in his De conjunctionibus magnis insignioribus superiorium planetarium. Since a new trigon, which is the fiery, is now imminent, Levitz wrote, undoubtedly new worlds will follow, which will be inaugurated by sudden and violent changes. For this has happened before, when one trigon ended and another began, but especially if the water trigon is being followed by the fiery. Leovitz was sure that the upcoming conjunction announced undoubtedly the second coming of the Son of God and man in the majesty of his glory. And then he talks about other stuff. Now, that is just absolutely uh, fascinating. So that is the basis of the clock. The dartboard, that is some alchemy, I think, which is behind it. If we're looking at constellations, 12 constellations wrapped around, or 20 constellations, and then we're looking at Jupiter and Saturn bouncing around the constellations in 20-year intervals, 20 being very sacred to the dartboard, along with 9. You see in the rules of darts, 20, but you see in the practice of darts, a British theme of the sacred 9, which is found in Wales, 9 paces away. And, and then you see things like the three throws. You have only three throws, three guesses. That's why I think it's a divination tool, the Western version of the I Ching. It goes back to the Stone Age. It's incredible. It's amazing. Probably my last video on darts. I hope you've really enjoyed that video, guys. Cheerio!